Competitive analysis is one of the easiest ways to find keywords that you can actually rank for that are relevant for your audience and that your like competitors have already proven works. So I really recommend doing this strategy and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with key search. This is one of like the few strategies I would say that is like still as relevant today as it was when I first began SEO back in 2021. So it's one of the things that has stood the test of time. And that's because it ultimately just comes from market research where you look at what your competitors are doing, you do some audience analysis, and then you figure out a way that you can improve on it. That's it. We're not stealing keywords. We're not stealing content. We're not stealing anything, to be honest. We're just looking at some ideas to see what the opportunities are out there and then seeing which ones make sense for us. So if you don't know me, hey, I'm Nina Clapperton. I'm the founder of She Knows SEO. And on my channel, I go through SEO, AI tips, uh, monetization tips, and really just whatever I find fun and interesting in online business. So if you wanna hit that subscribe button, I would very much appreciate it um, because I love making these things and ultimately it really helps me make more of them. Now, what I'm gonna go through today, we're gonna use Key Search. It is my favorite SEO tool. I've used Key Search, I think since, I mean, even before I was good at SEO, so probably 2020, if not earlier than that, um, it is really accurate, but it's also very accessibly priced. So Key Search will also give you 30% off if you use code she knows SEO, all one word, all lowercase. You'll get 30% off whether you choose to do an annual plan or a monthly plan. And by far, it is like the most cost-effective keyword research tool on the market while still being actually accurate and helpful because there are some that are not good. And I will just say that. <laughs> okay, so let's say I'm looking for some keywords for She Knows SEO. I'm trying to figure out what I want to write about next. Well, we all know that like the top 10 can be really hard to break into, right? So what we're going to do is look at our competitors and see someone who's on our level that we can compete with. For today's example, I'm going to use SEMrush just because I know that they have content that's SEO focused. And honestly, they were one of the first things that came to my mind, and I don't really want to call out any individual smaller company today. But what you would typically do is evaluate someone who is actually more competitive with you. I'm not an like SEO software tool, so it doesn't actually make sense for me to compete with them. I'm also like not on their level in terms of like domain authority, topical authority, and like overall brand authority in our niche. But I do think we have a similar topic, so it's close enough for me to use as an example today. Typically you want someone more like properly aligned with your business. So if I was Ahrefs, then SEMrush would be an amazing person to, or person, organization to compete with. If I was Key Search, again, SEMrush would make more sense than me who doesn't host an SEO tool of any sort. So just keep that in mind. But all we have to do is come to Key Search and you're gonna click up in the second area. It says competitive analysis at the top. And we wanna to go to the organic keywords area. This is where I already am. But this is going to allow us to evaluate any keywords that our competitors are ranking for so that we can see if we could also target them. So if I just put in semrush.com, we have options here of filtering by rank, traffic, or volume. Um, so that'll just like filter what we have down here. Then you can also do an entire domain or an individual page. The individual page is a bit different. For this strategy, we want the entire domain. And then you can add any filters you want. So let's say you don't cover local SEO, or maybe you only cover local SEO. Well, if you wanna cover local SEO, then you would put local or local SEO in here. And you can just put commas between things to um, filter from the different options, like the different words you want. If you have spaces, it used to be that it like wouldn't work. Now it's advanced itself. So spaces, it understands like hiking boots, all one thing together, comma, hiking, I don't know, poll or something, it would also know that like that's a different thing. You can also filter to only have it show you certain options. So maybe I only want it to show me things ranking one to 20. In this case, they're gonna have a lot of number one rankings, so this will be a bit easier. But many times your competitors like don't have that many, and so you don't wanna accidentally be looking at something where they rank like 67th. You can also filter by like estimated traffic, it's not perfect, but this can help you get rid of any keywords that like probably aren't driving them any actual traffic, or you can do it by volume. I think traffic is way better. But for our example, let's just do it unfiltered at first, and we're just going to run this. You click search up here, or if you're in filters, you click add filters, and then it just takes a second to run through all of their keywords. So you just wait while this works. It depends on the site. Sometimes it's really quick, um, especially if they only have like two keywords that they end up ranking for, which happens a lot when you mine someone who's like, this is called like keyword mining essentially. Um, 
if you mind someone who's big on like Instagram or Pinterest, usually their SEO is pretty terrible, which is sad because I'm like, you should just be good at multiple spots. <laughs> like those of us that are good at SEO, we often have to do other socials as well. And it's very funny to me that other socials don't demand the same excellence. Okay, so it's taking a little bit longer today. We'll just have to wait it out. I'll pause and come back when it's ready. Okay, that only took an extra second. I'm gonna move my little head over here. But now we can see all of the different things that SEMrush is ranking for. And it gives me a thousand keyword entries. So if we go to the very end, we'll see that we're still on rankings of like number one. And that's just because like this is an SEO site, they're good at SEO. So like, of course, they're gonna have some good options here. But if I were to filter by anything with traffic over like, oops, sorry, 500 minimum, not maximum. <laughs> if we filter that, then it's actually going to potentially change this. I don't actually know how many total number one rankings they have. Um, so it, we might still end up with all number one. We'll see. Of course, I literally clicked that the moment it was ready. My bad. Um, so if we go to number 20, let's see. Yeah, like now we're getting more different variations in position. So what I like to do is I like to double click volume. So we're sorting by volume and then by position. And you'll see now this makes it go by like highest to lowest within the singular position. So that's gonna help me actually like organize this. Now, when we go through this, God, they have a lot of porn that they rank for. That's very like surprising to me. Um, I didn't know that about them. Interesting. But if we go through this, we can start to see what opportunities there might be for us. I'm actually, I've, I've never looked at this before for them. I did not know that this was what they're ranking for, so that's interesting. Um, but if I'm going through for She Knows SEO and looking for opportunities that would make sense for me, well, sure, local search engine optimization here for them gets them probably 8,000 minimum clicks a month for um, this individual keyword. But do I do local search engine optimization? No, I don't. So I don't wanna target this even though it's something that they rank for and potentially I could rank for and it has a high volume. It doesn't matter to my business. I'm not gonna do all of these weird, like <laughs> just like scammy sites. I don't, know, I don't know why they're ranking for most of that stuff. Um, but for other things like for chat GPT prompts, off page SEO, those might like align more for me. So I would take all of those and I personally pop them into my SEO spreadsheets for bloggers. There are 12 spreadsheets that I made specifically for bloggers to be able to organize all of their content. It includes keyword analysis, competitive analysis sections, and a way that you can track all of your posts, as well as ways to like organize your topical analysis, uh, or pardon me, your topical analysis, your topical authority with topical maps, um, and a few different ways to like keep track of things like your content audits and stuff like that. They're the ones I use literally every day with all my businesses. And you can get them for $9 if you want. I'll have like a QR code somewhere on screen and I'll have it linked in the description of this video if you wanna check it out. Um, but yeah, if I go through this, same thing, like SEO agency services Dubai doesn't make sense for me. I'm not in Dubai, but there's things like keyword stuffing. Okay, that has some merit. So what I would do then is I would just take it and I would first search on there we go, on key search in the main area. This is just like the general keyword research area. And I wanna see who comes up for this. So here we can see keyword stuffing, 5,400 volume. What we saw over here was 5,400. You can see that like it tracks itself. And here SEMrush is ranking number one. And I can look at who else is ranking for this to see, do I have opportunities in here? Now, again, I chose a site that doesn't necessarily match my abilities, um, but, if I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, they are showing up. So if I was comparing myself to them and I was comparable, I could go for this. So this just is like an easy way to find things that we're still seeing blog content in the top 10. I know that we have like fewer blogs in the top 10 than before because Google's diversifying the different types of things that are showing up there. But this is a really great way to find ones where we know for sure a blog is ranking. But then we just have to filter it to make sure it's something that we feel confident we can write about that's relevant to our business um, and overall that just like aligns with what we're doing. I personally don't want to like write a bunch of random stuff about porn for my site just to get some traffic. I don't think that's helpful. I don't really know why SEMrush thinks that's helpful. Calling them out here. Why are you guys doing that? <laughs> um, for me, I think it's much better to go for things like SEO and link building, SEO company Toronto. I'm based in Toronto, so that would make sense for me. Um, Although I think that's gonna be more like 
probably agency stuff, which isn't my preference. Uh, we have catchy title generator. I could make like an SEO title generator there. There's a lot of different opportunities here that would make more sense for me versus me going for just like the highest volume that doesn't matter. So that's competitive analysis, basically. All you're doing is you're searching your competitor, you're looking at what they rank for, and then you're evaluating it for yourself and your content. We're not just copying and pasting everything they have. We're a different entity, we're a different company. If you did exactly what they did, number one, it's not original, and why would your audience read your stuff? Number two, again, it's just like, it's not about you. So like, how does that help serve your purposes? Um, and we are ultimately always making sure that we are writing unique content. So how could I do that if it's something that like the top marketing companies in India, I don't know, I'm not based in India. I haven't used those companies. So like, why would I have that on my site? You know what I mean? Now I do want to address something that comes up a lot with things like competitive analysis and any form of market research, really. People always are like, Am I stealing? Like, is this stealing something? No, it's not. Because a keyword is not something that can be copywritten. It is literally a research term. It is just something that someone's typing in to Google or ChatGPT search or Bing or any of the millions of different search engines to get an answer, to get results. No one owns that term. <laughs> like that doesn't, it's not a trademark thing that's happening there. Um, it's a search behavior. So what we're doing here is just analyzing market research of search behavior to see what we can do to improve ourselves. We are not stealing content. We are not exactly copying and pasting anyone else's stuff. Let's make that very clear. We are writing our own content because why would your audience want to work with you or want to read your stuff if it is a direct plagiarism of someone else's? Please stop doing that. Whoever is teaching people to do that, it is the dumbest idea. Write your own stuff, okay? <laughs> what we want is for you to actually create something that is unique and helpful, but is related to what your audience needs to know about. And if a big company like SEMrush has already gone out and like done a ton of that market research, you're saving a step by kind of leveraging some of their existing research. Then you wanna go and fill in the gaps yourself and add in your unique audience perspective on top of that, both inside the post and with other posts. Okay, so that's competitive analysis. Again, I use Key Search for this. You can get 30% off with code she knows SEO, all lowercase. Um, and again, that applies for either their monthly plan or their annual plan. I'm on their annual plan, have been for literal years, and I absolutely love it. It's super, super helpful. And I think I've maxed out my keywords in a single day twice. And it was when I was doing like literally thousands of keywords a day for like a weird package I sold once um, and then realized I need to sleep. <laughs> but otherwise, like you can do hundreds of keywords. You can do so much analyses like this. And if I wanted to keep going through SEMrush, I could just filter and then do position like two, position three, position four, position five, because they have so many and I only get the first thousand. Well, then you just adjust things and then you just filter and then you can get more and more of those specifics. I could even have like, if I specifically want something on internal links, I could filter for that. And then it's only gonna come up, oh, okay, it looks like maybe they don't, doesn't have that much traffic, um, but it's gonna come up with whatever they have. And you can see when it doesn't have stuff, it will not lie to you. It will just leave them off. <laughs> so this is really helpful to go through and do some analyses. Um, a little note though, I will say, I basically ignore the keyword difficulty scores now. I don't think any keyword research tool is tracking topical authority the way that they should. Um, and I, I would love to see a company like Key Search figure this out because I know companies like TubeBuddy can do this for YouTube much better and like weight the results. And I would love to see this happen for our accounts um, for things like Key Search. But with this, I'm like, look, I've already analyzed the competitor. I know that that competitor is someone I can compete with. Then I don't need to worry about the difficulty score. I'm just worried about finding some keyword ideas that I can work with. So. That's competitive analysis. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. It helps me out. Um, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, and I would love to help you out with more of your SEO strategies. If you also wanna check out Key Search, I have a really in-depth tutorial I did running through the entire system, um, which is like, basically a masterclass on keyword research, on using key search, and on all the different ways that you can use this to improve your overall site strategy. 
all of which are still things that I'm doing. Um, the only thing I'm doing less of is the content assistant, and that's just because we need more unique content versus hitting every single must word. So if you wanna know what that means and you want some examples of it, click that video on screen right now, and I will see you um, in a couple weeks with my next video. Bye.